When a child is born, their sex is assigned. After looking at a baby's genitalia, a doctor will decide the sex of a child, and with that decision, gender is attached. This is the child's first introduction to the gender binary. The gender binary suggests that there are only two genders, man and woman. The gender binary also suggests that gender is a biological phenomenon by enforcing that genitalia is a deciding factor in gender identity. This is wrong because there is no scientific proof that by having a vagina or a penis and having the corresponding chromosomes that a person will identify with the gender that is aligned with their sex. It is also important to note that individuals who identify with a gender opposite of their sex are not all trans or intersexual people. In the case of intersex people whose chromosomes, gonads, and genitalia do not conform to their assigned sex and gender at birth, the gender binary is not applicable. The simple fact that all people <clears throat> are not born fitting into the gender binary is evidence enough that gender is a social construct and not a biological phenomenon. It is known that many people exist as intersexual. Anne Fostall Sterling in 2000 stated that all, that of all recorded births, 4% of all live births were intersexual. And that roughly for every 1,000 children born, 17 are intersexual in some form. For intersexual people, life can be can prove to be tough if they do not adhere to what gender was assigned to them at birth. The biological existence of intersexual people forces others to understand that two sexes and two genders are not, in fact, the natural way of the world, as the Western world would like to believe and encourage. Intersexual people do not exist or do not have to exist in an ambiguous space of gender identity either, but some do choose not to force the gender binary upon themselves because it would be futile to boil their biological and physical existence down to the words such as man or woman. Fred Martinez, the young Navajo teens whose life and murder is documented in the film Two Spirits, is an example of a person who felt that their gender identity was more complex than man or woman. Fred Martinez was neither boy nor girl. He was biologically male, but identified as a girl some days and a boy on others. Having lived in an American border town where the implementation of gender binaries is, is extremely important, Martinez's complex gender identity threatened the understood heteronormative patriarchal views of masculinity. Martinez is murdered and labeled a thing they call a cigarette in other parts of the world because YouTube will demonetize me if I say the word and was labeled a F A G by his murderer, even though Martinez never labeled himself as homosexual or gay. When another male bodied person decides to perform a female gender identity along with their male gender identity, it can make those who restrict themselves to the gender binary uncomfortable. Therefore, they seek to eradicate the male and female bodied people who do not adhere to the specifics of the gender binary. As said earlier, people are not born inherently possessing the common and often stereotypical heteronormative and patriarchal traits associated with their gender. The gender roles assigned within the gender binary cause issue for many because they assert the biological determines the social, which is not true. The biological does not determine the social. There is no scientific evidence of this. This is is not fair to many individuals because some little girls prefer, prefer to behave like little boys. Even suggesting that certain traits, activities, toys, and etc. belong to a specific gender because of the genitalia that gender has is wrong and damaging. Bell Hooks elaborates on this when speaking about her experience with gender identity and how her possessing a vagina dictated whether or not she could play with marbles which at her time of upbringing were understood to be a boy's toy. Bell Hooks, in Understanding Patriarchy, recounts a traumatic event where her father beat her for going against his wishes and continued to play marbles with her brother. 
Bell Hooks was often the winner during these marble matches, and being a girl, it was wrong for her to win against her brother. Her father then decides that the only way his child will understand how to perform her gender correctly is to beat her. Even after severely beating his child, he continues to tell the story of her beating to remind her that she is not to behave differently than told by a man or woman with patriarchal views. Hooks' beating is an example of how gender is socially constructed. To be beaten and told that you cannot do something because you are a girl is how she was conditioned to understand what it meant to be a girl, also immediately attaching violence to being a girl. In Bell Hooks' case, it meant she was not allowed to play marbles, must listen to the men in her home, and never disobey them. Hooks describes the cultural and patriarchal beliefs of her parents, saying... As their daughter, I was taught that it was my role to serve, to be weak, to be free from the burden of thinking, to caretake and nurture others. Yet this was not her true nature, to be docile, a caretaker, or behave submissively, even though her parents believed that was the role of a girl and that she was going to behave in this way. Hook's parents viewed being feminine and masculine in very specific ways that confused both of their children. Hooks being the aggressive, stronger, and more violent child made her masculine to her parents. Her behavior was seen as wrong, and her brother being the more gentle and docile and peaceful sibling was even worse, according to Hooks' parents. Hooks' parents were constructing the idea that for a girl to behave like a boy, something was wrong with that child. Hooks being born female, but behaving the opposite of what was expected proves that gender and characteristics associated with those genders are not inherent to people, but in fact, learn traits and behaviors. Michael S. Kimmel expands on this with manhood by stating, manhood does not bubble up to consciousness from our biological makeup. It is created in nature. Boys will not just be boys unless taught how to be. Manhood is often defined by men's interactions with women and the social norms of the culture. Though it changes with the times, it is also always in direct relation to how men are to interact with women and should be perceived by them. The Western construct of gender that exists within a hierarchy where men are on top and women are subordinate to men does not exist in all cultures. This supports the claim that gender is a social construct and how it is constructed is specific to every culture. In sexuality and gender in certain Native American tribes, the case of cross-gendered females, Evelyn Blackwood begins this essay stating, Ideological concepts of gender and sexuality arise from cultural constructions and vary from culture to culture, offering a different view of gender. In the West, it is easy to forget that the rest of the world does not adhere to the constricting rules of the gender binary. Blackwood makes this claim to support their finding that many Native American cultures recognize more than two genders. The Native American understanding of gender is one that is most accepting. Native American societies can allow for more than two genders to exist because these societies traditionally do not have a hierarchy in the term of gender. They allow for a sexual fluidity and there are no cultural sanctions against making the choice to identify with a gender that does not match your sex. In these culture, women are valued and mother is not her primary identity, which allows women to take on the role of man as understood in Western cultures. These cross-gendered women that Blackwood discusses in their essay are women who are, in their culture, allowed to marry other women. And their relationship is understood as one of man and wife, not lesbian. When Western ethnographers researched cross-gendered people, it was difficult for those ethnographers to accept that men could be in female roles and women could be in male roles. For the ethnographers, gender was a biological phenomenon. The existence of men who behaved as women and women who behaved like men 
unfortunately, was not evidence enough for them, these Western ethnographers, that gender was constructed in the Native American society to transcend the sex of an individual. Gender is a social construct. Gender is a learned behavior. Gender is nurture, not nature.